thank you for inviting IE again to organize uh, the workshop in Trieste. I'd like to also thank all participants who submitted the applications and received confirmation for participation and thank it was great interest and thank you very much also to express the interest. Of course, I'd like to thank all our lecturers who, dis who agreed to give lectures on this new, let's say, relatively new think topic which we developing. And I, uh, of course, for the organizers, as this is really a great place. Last time was December, was very cold, I was here but maybe more productive. Today is also not very hot, so not for swimming, probably. Then please concentrate on this workshop. Uh, I'll tell about the program, so we will organize maybe three groups, three or four groups, I, I guess, from all participants, and then you will be working in these groups, not only during the day, but also at night. After, of course, you please have fun also around in this great place. But don't forget that it's one of the most uh, interesting also things and fun happens here in this, in this hall when you listen to our lectures about this new technology, which is open source, I don't know, the codes or software for, to, to be used in nuclear reactors, both in fission and fusion. In, in, in fusion. We will concentrate this uh, this week on two main tools which we've selected. It's OpenMC for Monte Carlo simulations of neutronics, and CFD2 is open form and it's derivative and family. But we also, you will have a look at few uh, other, only briefly, open source tools for this, which we believe and all experts, many experts believe that it's kind of alternative or additional, uh, let's say, open source software adds an additional dimension to the all numerical simulations and what we have fleet of the computer codes may be very old and especially for the new generation, you are free to use it. It's very easy to start. Uh, okay, it's cost nothing to obtain and to be involved. So from now, I think, how can we start presentation? I, I prepared a brief introduction of the IE. Probably. How do we start it? Let, like to share, a, I think, share a screen. Uh -huh, okay, okay, I see. Looks okay, right? We close a couple of. Okay, before we start this workshop on open source nuclear codes and software for reactors analysis and simulation and more in general and simulation of nuclear energy systems, I would like to introduce uh, IE activities related to innovative nuclear energy systems. That systems require this new software. And let me start very briefly again with the situation, let's say, energy situation in the world. Uh, about, you know, big part of the 1.3 billion people is the situation for the 2020, I believe, the status. They don't have access to the energy at all, not electricity, but, but of course with other type like woods, they can, but to electricity, no. And uh, one billion of people cannot, don't have access to the health care due to the energy poverty. And 2.6 billion people rely on biomass, like, like our, you know, grandfathers or maybe more, for the thousand, thousand years. Still, it's a, a significant part of the world uh, have no access to the electricity like we have here and all developing countries, developed countries. And... Uh, this is a problem that can be solved in, in one way or another. And nuclear power is one of the means, one of the, let's say, players on this, on, on, on this story who can help us to solve these uh, problems. In 2022, nuclear reactors generated 
1% of total electricity in the world, which is, by the way, like 1% less than two years ago. I am just showing the slide actually in every presentation since 2016 and saying that this number is decreasing, by the way. For whatever reasons, one of this introduction of the renewable energy sources and like skepticism of many countries like Germany who shut down the uh, nuclear power plants, but still it's 10% of the total electricity, and this part can share, can be made higher if we need the sustainable source of energy or not. Okay, and finally we have now in the world 437 nuclear power reactors which generate about 300, okay, about 400 gigawatt electric installed capacity. They operate in 30 countries, both developed and developing. And still now we have an additional, there is interest in the, uh, the nuclear reactors, 57 reactors under construction with 60 gigawatt electric altogether, so more or less it means one gigawatt units in 15 countries, and two of them are newcomer countries. And in this case, China, I should say that China plays a significant role. They build a lot of reactors because China is growing up, and if, if you need to, if you grow, and if you improve your quality of the people, you can see China is, it changes in every year, the, then you need more and more energy. This is one of the key, more or less, how much energy is consumed. It's kind of not direct, but indirect indicator how the quality of life in the country. So let me say that nuclear capacity into for the how, how much electricity will be produced by nuclear power plants into up to 2050, according to the IEA projections. We have like optimistic or like high, it's not optimistic, maybe high energy, high scenario, low scenario, and before here that we have history. And you might see also the projections in 2010 and the projections in 2014, for example, they are decreasing. So the role of the nuclear power, even in projects, is decreasing. Um, and also, it's also, if you look at this, to the low projections and high projections, so the lowest is that electricity will be produced the same in gigawatts, but of course the share in percentages will be decreasing. But uh, the high projections is like uh, that the production of electricity by nuclear power plant will double in 2050. We actually don't know. It depends on many, many things and situation. And we are an engineers and you know the people who are in the industry, we work hard to make sure that this nuclear electricity is useful, it's sustainable, <coughs> excuse me, and it's safe. And you see that we can contribute a lot to the future energy generation, which is actually one of the keys to the successful and sustainable development of the nations. I will now try to play, if, if it works, this. Small video. In 1957, an agency was created with a vision to harness the power of the atom for the benefit of humankind. It works with partners across the globe to help countries use nuclear science and technology to meet development challenges. Boosting food supplies, improving health, protecting the environment and contributing to global peace. This agency provides the technology, expertise and training to make all this possible. Through nuclear science, it helps countries to develop high-yielding crops that can thrive in extreme conditions breed healthier livestock, and protect fruit and animals from harmful pests. The work of this agency supports the conservation of our oceans and coastlines, protecting the marine resources that ensure the livelihoods of millions of people. It promotes the use of nuclear technology to fight cancer 
and improve human health. The organization assists countries with their energy planning. If they choose nuclear power, it offers expertise to ensure facilities are run safely and securely. It provides standards and assistance to ensure the safe use of radioactive materials. Guidance on the management of the waste generated by the use of nuclear technologies. And helps nations to prepare for <coughs> and respond to incidents and emergencies. It's an agency that prevents the spread of nuclear weapons by helping to make sure that nuclear materials remain in peaceful uses. It's the global platform for cooperation in nuclear security, advising countries how to guard against nuclear terrorism and prevent the theft and smuggling of radioactive materials. Providing technology and expertise. Promoting safety and security. Assisting sustainable development. This is Atoms for Peace and Development. This is the IAEA. Okay, interesting, huh? So, taking the situation that I explained before, the role of the IAEA is, we say, Atoms for Peace and Development, means Atoms for Peace, promoting the peaceful use of atomic energy or nuclear energy, and preventing its use for the, you know, non-peaceful purposes, I would say, as a safeguards and so on. And this is agreement between countries who decided to, okay, the IA was founded almost 70 years ago. And then uh, by on the proposal of the US president, and the countries decided to, to do this to help developing countries to, 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 to use nuclear power as a peaceful, and in return, those countries don't decided not to develop nuclear weapons. For all this, maybe you saw in this uh, video, there are several directions which the IA is working, and one of them is our nuclear energy department is doing research and promoting the nuclear power, nuclear fuel cycle with technology, and also it helps planning information and knowledge management for the nuclear energy systems for sustainable development. We also have Department of Nuclear Safety and Security, which is related to the safe and or, or use of the nuclear, or in general, atomic energy, and in particular, safety of nuclear power plants. There is a Department of Nuclear Science and Applications. We take care of medical, for example, using the nuclear isotopes in agriculture and so on. Department of Safeguards that guarantees, like the countries who are joining non-proliferation treaty, they uh, pro they provide the resources, I mean safeguards to control the non-proliferation of the nuclear energy. The Department of Management, very big, very powerful department, manage everything, including money, and also Department of Technical Cooperation that supports developing countries in and several, several projects directly supports with financial activity. Uh, okay, this is m more, not really easy, but maybe you don't need to know also the old details, just your brief information. And uh, I have a pleasure to lead the Fast Reactor Technology Development Team, which is part of the Nuclear Energy Department in Division of Nuclear Power in a section of Nuclear Power Technology Development, where we are doing uh, supporting development and research and cooperation and organize any activities on advanced, uh, innovative and advanced reactors, including advanced water-cooled reactors, SMR, small, moderate, and medium-sized reactors, also for non-electrical application, and fast reactors, which I am responsible for. Within this, uh, in our activities, we concentrate on several directions. Of them is sharing of knowledge, which me, means we organize, we publish documents on, on several 
activities or, or several topics. We organize conference and technical meetings. And also, it's also related to capacity building, which includes training courses, workshop, and workshops, similar like we have here, thanks to ICTP. And for technology development, we organize several research activities, including coordinated research projects. Let me just show you briefly what is the, let's say, current very you know, primitive explanation of the status of innovative energy systems or innovative nuclear reactors. Taking the example of Generation 4, <coughs> Generation 4 International Forum is an organization, probably you know, which uh, trying to implement some rules and designs and international cooperation in the field of the innovative nuclear reactors. And they selected six systems potentially interested and that could be innovative, safe, and sustainable and help to support sustainable energy, including sodium cooled fast reactors, which are operating now, lead cooled fast reactors, very high temperature reactor reactors, supercritical water cooled reactors, and gas cooled reactors and molten salt reactors. Let us have a look at the status of the innovative reactors, fast, which are, most of them are in, working in the fast neutron spectrum, uh, who, which are operating now in the world. In Russia, we have three reactors, one experiment, okay, research reactor or experimental reactor, both 60 very old reactor, and, uh, but still it's 60 megawatt. It's 10 megawatt electric, 60 megawatt thermal, and two industrial size reactor band 600 and band 800, all sodium cooled reactors operating. China uh, <coughs> operates against small 20 megawatt electric sodium cooled reactor CFR, which is China experimental fast reactor, relatively new since 2011. India operates old reactor 1985 and now is commissioning PFBR which is a prototype sodium cooled fast reactor, breeder reactor, they said, 500 megawatt electric, and it's now under commissioning, which is delayed, now expected in 2024 to, to be connected to the grid. Japan now operates Joyo, small, or let's say, small experimental reactor, again sodium cooled, and they have apply, applied for the renewal of the license that should be expected to restart the operation in 2024. And the, if you look at the reactors and look, this all those reactors are sodium cooled fast reactors. If you look at fast reactors under construction and decommissioning, you will find that Russia is building replacement for Bor 60. Uh, again, experimental sodium cooled reactor Embir, 50 megawatt electric that's expected to start operation in 2028. Uh, from the new types, Russia is building uh, now constructing reactor Brest 300, which is lead cooled reactor. It's a demonstrator of the lead, lead cooled and heavy liquid metal cooled reactors technology. Expected to start operation in 2026. We will see. China now is constructing two actually <coughs> sodium cooled fast reactors CFR 600, 600 electric each. And it's under construction, and even there are news that the first unit was the two, it's the same type of, exactly the same, I mean, with maybe features, but the same design reactors. And one of them was reached critical, oh, sorry, physical criticality, whatever it is, as some reports indicate this. Uh, as for decommissioning, Japan is decommissioning Monju reactor which was started operation in 94 and stopped in 95. Now decided to completely decommission. USA is decommissioning FFTF. Actually, France is also decommissioning, uh, I believe, Phoenix and Super Phoenix reactors as well. This is like current status. And you see, if you see that most of them, of those reactors are sodium cooled fast reactors. However, if you look at the new types of the reactors, which are under development and design. This slide sh shows, let's say, many conceptual designs. And in bold, I try to show the designs and the reactors which have some interest and some you know, promotion and, let's say, movement. 
Към парето за мъмения за тая свичва са постулби дизайните на пастиес, but like now on hold. But in both we have cellular reactors, which proposed in different countries and many, and most of them, if you look, several of them, many of them are still sodium cool fast reactors, but some others, especially as reactors cooled by heavy liquid metals such as lead and lead is metaprotected. Also there are projects on molten salt cooled reactors and also on gas cooled reactors cooled by helium, for example. This is a project and conceptual design shows that the growing interest to the different types of the construction. Okay, this slide shows uh, our main activities in the, field, in the field of fast reactor technology, which just for your interest, maybe you can have a look and see and read the reports about those activities. One of the most important activities that we conduct is coordinated research projects. When we try to, on the several topics, we organize this project, which is typically four years old, we invite 15, 20, 25, or 30 organizations from around the world to participate on different topics. And this slide shows the pot potential names. For the, to save time, I, I will probably not go. I will show you several examples of the CRPs. And typically, the and most successful, I would say, CRPs are CRPs are, which are benchmark. And for this case, it's benchmark analysis of the FFTF loss of flow without scrum test, means unprotected loss of flow. And FFTF is fast flux test facility. It's sodium cooled reactor in the US. It's 400 megawatt sodium cooled fast reactor, thermal, 400 megawatt thermal. And the, this particular test, and ANL provided, or I mean, actually, US provided the experimental data of this test. <coughs> so, uh, okay, I've forgotten to say this reactor had interesting feature. It's a passive shutdown system, so-called. So, means uh, reactor sh shuts down passively without any intervention of the humans. And in this case, they uh, invented, let's say, and installed so-called gas expansion models, which is em empty fuel subassembly, let's say, with gas. And when, oops, sorry. Actually, it's, it's, it's filled with sodium, but when you have the nominal flow rate and enough inlet pressure, but if the flow rate is good, for whatever reason, pump stops, so it means it's the most uh, dangerous situation considered for the, this type of the reactors, unprotected loss of flow, when you don't have flow, but still you have this energy is released in, in, in the reactor core. In this case, uh, you, you, sh you should shut down the reactor somehow. And this space of shutdown system shows that when flow is decreasing, so pressure becomes slower, and this gas expands in this subassembly. Since it's a peripheral area, it, reactivity of the reactor becomes uh, lower, and it shut down. And this test demonstrated this capability of this reactor to survive during this test during such a situation when pump were completely lost. And uh, US, our US uh, participants provided the experimental data for the blind simulation. Blind means participants didn't know how to simulate the, uh, the results. They knew the, the input data, design of the reactor, the conditions, but they didn't know how to, the final results. And they simulated blindly, and then results were compared between each other. That was a very interesting test, which was completed. Another test, which we will, you will learn also about benchmark, which is neutron benchmark of CFR startup test. CFR is China Experimental Fast Reactor, and CIE, China Institute of Atomic Energy, uh, agreed to provide the experimental data on, on this test, this standard neutronic test from the very beginning, and we have like about 30 participants, 30 participation organizations that calculated neutronic with different types of code, including open source code OpenMC, which we will learn this week more in more details. This slide shows result, some result of simulations. Maybe you will, you will not repeat the simulations this week, but you will learn how to do it. 
And we have several training materials and documents on this. It's the guidance for how to use Serpent 2 and OpenMC to simulate uh, this example of this test. And we have conducting again, I, I'd, like, I'd like to thank the ICTP and Nicolas for providing us possibility to conduct this kind of educational workshops in here in this beautiful place, Trieste. You, and uh, <coughs> I personally participated in, uh, in organization of the workshops on uh, physics and technology of innovative nuclear energy systems in 2016, 2018, and last December in Trieste. And I see some of them participated. I, I see the famous faces. <laughs> yeah. I saw where some people online, okay, and also online. So you are already well prepared. Before I go to the, our, directly to our workshop topics, <coughs> I want to also to advertise a little bit the possibility to work at the EIA. You can also like, apply as a professional, young professional, or also if you are a student, law, you, you can um, try to apply for the internship and, and uh, conduct internship in the IEA for one year. All this available you can find the, in the IEA, and it's really nice place also, Vienna, to live, and also fun. You can meet many people and do networking and so on. Please consider this possibility. Thank you for that. And now I go to the program of our workshop. Maybe you saw it already. Here this slide it shows it in a concentrated way. So in the morning and early afternoons, we will have like lectures given by our <coughs> experts from around the world. And uh, after, the, after lunch, we will move to the group walks and practical exercises on on, on this, mostly on the open form and open MC. And you will be split it in, I guess, three or four groups and working groups on several tasks and exercises assigned to you by our lecturers. Please do this group activity so, and you don't have to, I mean, work all the time on this. Please also sleep, please also have a fun, but also think and working in these groups. When you keep making fun, also discuss how to do. It's, uh, it's not individual task, but then you, work, you will learn how to work in team, try to lead and try to, <clears throat> and in the, on Friday, we will ask every representative from every group to deliver some presentation. Let's say maybe you have a, three exercises, you can have three presentations, small five minutes presentations on the result of your exercises. And uh, we will see what happens and we will compare, but it's not the, you know, the test or examination. I just want you to, to enjoy this week and enjoy these exercises, try to use, make use of direct contact with those guys who are the best experts. I think in open source software for nuclear reactors in the world, we try to find out all of them. Most of them are here this week in Trieste. There are a few exceptions, but, you, which, but they will connect online also. Huh? So then I, I believe we found everybody who can do this. Okay, and uh, then important on Tuesday and Wednesday, we will have two poster sessions where you will set your posters half on Tuesday and half on, I don't know, alphabetically or whatever on Wednesday. And you will have a chance to discuss with also all our lecturers, experts. We'll go through your posters together and asking you questions. I think we please try to make your presentation as quick as possible, like three minutes, and leave like two, three, five minutes for the, for the questions and answer, answers, okay? According to this poster, as a result of this poster presentation, we will select three winners, I believe, who will be awarded. Some small award from ICTP, I believe. And uh, please concentrate on this. But again, it's not an examination. Please have fun doing This is the main topic. 
when you do your job, when you work in this field of these simulations, tools, uh, it's important to like this and to, to have a fun, not to be like, like, I don't know, walking from eight to five, five days per week, waiting for Friday. Just try to, to make fun and all, even on holidays, like consider it half holidays, half enjoyable and good chance to, to learn something new which is really interesting and fun. Okay, let me now start with quick introduction of our lecturers. And first is Professor Carlo Frarina. And uh, Carlo was received his PhD from Politecnico di Milano. He also speaks Italian, I believe, so feels very comfortable in this environment. And his expertise is in the field of modeling and simulation, scientific computer software development, and technology of advanced reactor systems. Carlo will be presenting uh, several lectures and exercises on open form, which is a CFD2. And uh, open form is general name. We have variation, several variations and derivatives of family of the open, this open form in application to the nuclear power systems, like gen form and so on. Uh, Carlo was also leading, one of the leading experts in the uh, collaborated center between the IEA and EPFL in Switzerland. Since January 2023, he works as an associate professor at the Department of Nuclear Engineering at Texas A&M University. And after, oh, actually, the, the important thing, Carla is also the chair of the expert group of the IE on Korea Initiative, which is open source codes for the nuclear reactors on Korea. Is it? <laughs> and uh, I'd like to thank you for that. And he is a re really enthusiast of the open source software and really helping the IE in, in promoting these activities. Thank you, Carla. When Carla moved, decided to move to the US, also his colleague from EPFL, Ecole Polytechnica Federale de Lasagne, uh, Dr. Alessandro uh, Scolara, Alessandro. Okay, he also, he, he actually replaced Carlo in the position of this uh, collaborative center I know who is the main expert, I would say, and focal point, and main working force also for this. Actually, we submitted extension already, and it will be. Okay, this is, we will talk later. And uh, the main role of APFL, as Alessandro described, is to manage computational activities of the lab laboratory for nuclear reactor physics and system behavior. So Alessandro received his Master of Science in Nuclear Engineering in 2016, and then got his PhD in 2021 from EPFL. And he was also working in Nagra, Switzerland, in the field of nuclear power waste characterizations. Uh, Alexandre is also expert in open FM, open form, sorry, family, and will give several lectures and practical exercises this week. Dr. Stefan Kane from Germany, from the uh, Jülich University, Jülich Research Center, actually, right? In, in Germany, he has PhD, his PhD in mechanical and nuclear engineering from Buch Research Working Technical Aachen in 2010. And he founded, after that, a research group and became principal investigator and head of the thermal fluid dynamics and system analysis group at Forschung Zentrum Jülich. Research Center Zurich in Germany. His interest, scientific interest and research interest are on CFD for reactor safety, severe accident phenomena, and passive safety systems. And uh, Stefan is also teaching in the Aachen RWTH, which I don't know exactly, sorry, Aachen University, and another Aachen University, oh my God. He is a member of the Ancora expert group and um, participate in several activities of OCD nu Nuclear Energy Agency, and also uh, participate in several European projects 
on the accident scenario community and related activities in research and development. Again, she is an expert in CFD and open form family cause. And Dr. Stefano Lorenzi is from Milana, Politecnico di Milano, sorry. He is teaching courses experimental nuclear reactor kinetics and integration of nuclear and renewable energy for carbon neutral scenarios. And he participates in different European research projects on lead cooled fast reactors, such as LEADER and Pascal projects, on molten salt reactors, and, and also several projects related to the small modular reactors and development. He is an author and more than 70 international papers, means papers published in the international journals, and 685 citations in high 15 in Scopus dat database. Stefano, just show you. And he, I would like to add that he organized uh, last year, it was last year, the great technical meeting, it was hosted technical meeting in Milano related to the open source software and computer codes in application for the nuclear energy. Thank you for that, Stefano. Again, expert in low perform. Now we come to the Neutronics people, and first of them is Dr. Javon Cho. She is a senior researcher and advanced reactor technology development division of KAIRI, Korea Atomic Energy Research Institute. And she is working on core analysis and core development for the sodium cooled fast reactors. She received her final education PhD in 2021, just two years ago. And <coughs> she's an expert in Monte Carlo codes, and she is mastering to, to run the Open MC and also Serpent. I believe she participates in the IESRP on CFR, and she was also in turn three years ago in the IES, spent one year, one year, you all right, in Vienna as an intern, and now she got very nice promotion, and she will uh, uh, show you how to use OpenMC uh, to the practical application to the China experimental fast reactors. Dr. Patrick Shrivaitze, sorry, Patrick, maybe, uh, also the great expert and, and developer of the OpenMC. Open MC. He is scientist in Aragon National Laboratory and adjunct professor at the University of Oops, UW, Madison, okay. Uh, and he's actually the great expert in Monte Carlo simulations. You will see, and from my personal experience, he also is a great teacher. Like he explains very simply and effectively how to use this very simple example, how to use op OpenMC. Even I did understand last time, st started understanding how to use it. And he got his PhD at the University of Wisconsin, Madison, which now he's adjunct professor there. And uh, okay, he again is a member of not only American Nuclear Society, for, but for me, is most important. He is a member of the IE on Korea expert group. Also, thank you for joining us, Patrick. And uh, we have also OpenMC is using not only for fission nuclear reactors, so let's say traditional, but also for the future fusion reactors calculations. And for this OpenMC for fusion, we will have a lecture, online lecture from Dr. Jane Hagois who is a neutronic scientist in the United Kingdom Atomic Energy Authority. And uh, he speciali spe specialist focuses in radiation transport and performs neutronic analysis of tokamak concepts, like for the step and for demo designs. And his primary focus is on, crit on, on critical tritium bridium ratio, TBR, radiation shielding, and nuclear heating calculations for the early design phase of fusion reactor. Okay, and then he used several Monte Carlo codes and other codes to, sim to si simulate, calculate neutronics and expert in the OpenMC and will give, I believe, on Friday in the agenda lecture on this. Dr. Andrew Davis from the UK also will join us online together with James, 
they will again explain the how to use open MCF fusion or CHS for this. He grad was graduated from University of Bir excuse me, Birmingham in nuclear physics in 2009, and he works in United, U United Kingdom Atomic Energy Agency as staff in Neutronics and Nuclear Data Group. And actually, he was also leading these all studies on Monte Carlo calculations for the fusion reactors. Uh, again, another online participant will be Dr. Nick Turin, who, has, who is the main developer and initiator of the uh, Army software, which is, by the way, not why, but I. This is different Army, not what you think. It's a mistake, typo here. <laughs> Our, the Army is integrated in uh, adv I mean, sorry, advanced reactor modeling interface, which integrates like interface, how to store data and how to simulate reactors with, with interfaces to the different simulation codes. And he works at TerraPower on design of the sodium cool fast reactor core and software since 2009. Now he is a manager of digital engineering and great expert. Unfortunately, he, he will not participate uh, in person, but he will give an online lecture on Army and show, oh, again, show how to easy and how to use Army. Could give you a good start to, to do it. He got his PhD from University of Michigan in nuclear engineering again. And also he runs very interesting public education platform what is nuclear.com, which I invite you to participate. And, uh, okay, my name is Vladimir Krivensov, and together with Dr. Nikoleta Marilova, we are organizing this uh, works educational workshop. Nikoleta works since 2021 as a nuclear engineer in fast reactor technology development team. He completed his PhD, got her obtained her PhD from Castro Institute of Technology in Natural Sciences in 2020. Then she worked as a postdoc there, and since 2021, she's working in our fast reactor technology development team. Okay, I was, I am working in the IE since 2016. Before, I was working in Institute of Physics and Power Engineering in Obninsk when I graduated. I obtained my PhD in Obninsk Institute of Nuclear Engineering in 1994. Then I also decided, for whatever reasons, to get a doc doctor engineering course from Tokyo Institute of Technology in 1999. Then I was working in several uh, organizations, including Japan Nuclear Cycle Institute, which is Japan Atomic uh, Energy Agency now and also before in Tokyo Institute of Technology, again in INPE in Obninsk, and also Karlsruhe Institute of Technology in Germany. And since 2016, I have a pleasure to lead this team of fa on fast reactor technology, and sometimes we organize several activities. Okay, I think that is all what I wanted to say, maybe too long, but you have good introduction, and I believe you, I think ICTP always have a perfect organization. They put videos, slides, everything immediately, almost after, after this completion. So you, you can look at this, mine, and all other presentation on, on the website. And there are some information. If you're interested, please let us know. And welcome to Trieste. And I'm sure, I'm confident we'll have a great week with and you will go back home to, to your countries with much improved knowledge on the open source software for nuclear reactors. Thank you.